Hello. Hello. We're back. Baby. After three very busy weeks. Yeah, just kind of vanished, you know. We're like, oh, we might miss a finale or something, you know. But then we missed the two weeks before that. Well, uh, uh, just for a bit of clarity for the people who do follow us, um, I, well, first week we were, I, I was in Bournemouth by accident. I went to go help out on a mate's thing. And uh, by the time I, I, I realized kind of halfway through the week, oh, wait, I'm on a coach when it airs. So I got home and watched it, but I was just too tired to, to podcast. And then the week after that, uh, no, I got, wait, no, 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 no. I watched it in Bournemouth. That was it. Yeah, I watched it in Bournemouth. And then I got back and then me and Comrade were shooting a short film for Comrade's college course. So then we just didn't really have time to podcast that. Finished that by the Sunday and then I was editing it because it was for the following Wednesday. So that was a really tight turnaround and I wanted it to be as high quality as possible for like the test it screening. <laughs> yeah, I think I think I did a pretty good job for the for the time scale. It was Got excellent. Of, do, do a bit of reshoots and then the mix will be properly done. Like the mix that was for that one was only about, I'd say about 50% done. Like there's so many more sound effects you can add in layering up and stuff, but people don't need to know this. Yeah, so, exactly. um, but yeah, so after some reshoots, but that's in a couple of weeks. But then, yeah, I was busy with that. So for Ascension of Assignment, again, watched it, but I just didn't have time. And then I was in Norway. I managed to watch the finale out there. Somehow my 4G managed to pick it up and said I was in Nottingham. I mean, they both begin with N. I can see why it got confused. But um, <laughs> yeah, so I guess we're kind of going to talk about all three. I, I mean, guess. I, 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 I did briefly put up, like, I, I don't know if anyone was paying attention, because we can't do community posts, because um, we don't have, like, have some sort of threshold, I think, for subscribers or views or something. So I, I posted in our discussion thread some, like, a thing, but I don't think anybody ever looks at the discussion thread on anybody's YouTube channel, ever. Does, ever. ever. So that was a pointless exercise, but I did it anyway in case anybody cared enough. <laughs> there we go. So yeah. it's not our fault. Um, well, it was. We we're just busy people doing busy things. Yeah. So, but you know, you uh, far more so than me. But I positive, did have a positive too. things though. It's not like we were just lazy. So, 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 so. I guess we start in order and go off that way. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Sounds good. We haven't actually talked about these much. We talked about the finale. A but, tiny uh, bit, but not massive, not extensively. And it's nice that we've had time to reflect. So I thought the haunting of House, the Dilla, whatever, mm -hmm. I thought that was really, really strong. Um, I enjoyed it. However, I felt like it wasted the opportunity of having Mary and Percy Shelley. Um, I just, I don't know. To me, like, I felt like it wasn't really a historical story yeah. at that well, point. For me, actually... Like the first half of the episode was quite a strong kind of horror story, and like I enjoyed it, and like they did some cool stuff. Like I, I wish they could have made the whole staircase going down and round a bit more visual, as opposed to just having them go off camera. And yeah. Come up. But, the, yeah. But, like, but but the concept itself was interesting, and they did some good horror stuff, and then they dumped the side men in it, and honestly, I think that detracted. Not that it became bad, but mm. honestly, this episode would have worked far better with an original threat to be honest i i would agree on that front i was a bit like ah, oh, oh okay the lone side man is this soon as well yeah no granted okay fine but it, it was just it was weird just episode five having so many different plot threads you know it, it was strange mm. But um, so I was like, okay, Lone Simon, man. And then when he started kind of showing these emotions, I was a bit like, oh, no, what are they doing? Yeah. But I felt like, actually, in terms of just the Simon man terms of things, I thought it was really strong and it was a different thing. It was slightly more interesting having this slightly, like, a Simon man with emotions who wasn't exploding. Because let's be honest, you know, like yeah. having all the all these Simon man ones, it's like as soon as their inhibitors come loose, they're all like, ah, and you know mind blown realistically not every single cyberman would well, do i think we already kind of got examples of that like um i think john lumick kept most of his well at least he kept his personality at the mm. very least as opposed to like a lot of the other cybermen I mean, um to be converted though i remember it was against his will yeah 
Um, I mean, of course, there's instances like Yvonne, Cyberman, yeah, in Doomsday. But I mean, yeah, I mean, having it like as a one-off, it works. I mean, I I wouldn't like it to be like a continuing thing, oh, no. and from the no. looks of things, it won't be because that is that does kind of take away what makes the Cybermen special to me. Mm. But as a one-off threat, you know, and actually, to be honest. The face under the cyber mask was never really that threatening to me. Honestly, it was no, kind of I didn't. A bit goofy, to be honest. It's like it, like it really does make you figure the guy in the costume as opposed to like the cold like steel yeah. to it. Mm. You know, I so, think it's going so, to be a bit more horror esque, I guess. Yeah, like like, a bit more like, metal like in it. You know, you know, like well, I guess they've changed this now, but. Like beforehand, at least as far as the Russell T era, they were like had these conversion plants where they like remove the brain and remove body bits and put them into the cyber body as opposed to just having like a body dead body in there and Yeah. Um and I mean that I mean that visual could have been cooler though, right? Because if you had like a brain and like an eyeball and like bits of like flesh and stuff, but like with like metallic things in between, that could have been quite a very well would be certainly very gruesome. <laughs> um, yeah. But um yeah, I think I would have liked that better, to be honest. Mm. Like, as, if you could see kind of that, it would have been more interesting seeing this cold-looking Cyberman with these emotions. I felt like that could have been slightly more interesting, mm. or just not, not so much of a face. Maybe just the eyes or something like, just an eye, you know, just a human eye or something like. Yeah. Maybe it was just too much face, but. I actually did quite like the costume. I like how it had the Mondasian arm and it was like kind of, you know, part way through. It's like what I found nice was that it was like, okay, so they still get turned into the Mondasian ones. Like it's a slow process as you become these kind of elite Cybermen. So it's like you start as these ones and you kind of work your way up. Mm. Um, but yeah, I thought, you know, the acting was solid all the way around. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, definitely. You know, I like. Yeah, I, I I enjoyed it a lot as an episode. I thought it was a strong one. I did feel it Solid detracted. Enough, but... I thought it did detract it being the Cybermen, um, but it was quite a good twist. You know, just this kind of figure, and it was just Cybermen. You're like, oh crap, lone Cyberman. Um, I thought the Doctor was more interesting in this one, actually, getting a bit more edgy. Like I can't always win. Yeah. Um, had to save Shelley. It was an interesting. I just feel like the characters were a bit wasted you can see how yeah. like mary shelley got the idea but also why not wipe their minds i don't yeah again like they they, they the whole thing at the beginning of the series has to happen again it's that was the dumbest thing like why did they do it it's like right so we're gonna leave mary shelley with memories of cybermen but these spies can't know anything about what you know like, if anyone's going to not say anything, surely it's the spies who, you know, would be smart enough to be like, no one's going to f- believe me about any of this. Hmm. So I'm not, I ain't going to say nothing, you know? Yeah. Strange, strange it was. choices. It was. Um, so, yeah, overall, I enjoyed it. It, it was good, good. Was good enough. You know, it, think... it wasn't nothing outstanding, but, um, you know, I think it, there was a few bits of mispotential. I got a but... bit confused with the bones, actually, the bones moving. What caused them to move? You know, like the hand, the skeleton hand was moving. Oh, right, yeah. Um... What was making them move? Was it Shelley was doing that? I... Or, or the ghosts, the real ghosts. Oh, yeah, because it was, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, that was a weird plot thread, which they just had in there. Yeah, that just never went anywhere. Yeah, that was a strange one. Kind of forgettable, that bit. Yeah. Mm, moving on. Uh, <laughs> cool. Ascension of Assignment. I really like this one. Freaking... <laughs> I mean, I don't want to jump ahead too, too much, except for I kind of am. But... This makes the next episode all the more painful because mm. I love this. This one this was great. Like, it was a really cool, like, very downbeat Cyberman episode. This oppressive, like, hopeless feeling throughout the whole thing. Yeah, and like each human who like, died. I, I, always, I always love, like, things that kind of had that kind of 
almost hopeless feeling to it. I, I know it's that, that sounds quite depressing. As you well. have to have uh, it sometimes like, to make it more impactful. You can't have it all the time, but when you do course. have it, it's impactful. Yeah, indeed, so, yeah. indeed. And I think this one did it excellently. Like, yeah, I would agree. I would wholeheartedly agree mm. with that. Um, I thought I really like the new designs. Actually, I think they're the it's best nice. we've. I don't know the the Russell T ones I really do like, but these are my second favorites. Not counting the Mondasian remakes because those are just retreads of ones for new designs. I really the, do like them. The helmets are better, but the fact that they basically left the bodies from Nightmare and Silver's design untouched kind of still bugs me since I never really liked the bodies. That was the biggest like the face, the heads weren't the biggest problem with the Nightmare and Silver design. The bodies were a bit too more messy. Metallic. Like have all these like like lines and nothing yeah. sleek and, and and they're not even without purpose like you know you look at the old side man they had like tubes up their arms and stuff like that's why there was like stuff on them but in this case it's just lumps just like yeah why did why was that it, it just seems really over designed like the side men i think are better that's what i think is yeah when it's cold and it's you know less to look at yeah that, that, that's probably how the bodies and that's why like it's like why did they like, as I said, I don't necessarily have a problem with the Nightmare and Silver's heads. I prefer these because they look a lot more kind of classic side men. Yeah. So simply like maybe the more kind of late 80s kind of side men more than anything, I think. Um, but the bodies, yeah, I, I just change those, please. <laughs> but it was nice to see some Russell T ones in there as well. There were two of them. I so, guess, yeah. Uh, the Cyber Drones, I was a bit like, hmm. Flying heads looks a bit strange to me, but did, yeah, especially considering they can do like other designs. Like, of course, we had stuff like the cyber mats before. I like, know that's what they... I was thinking. Like, just do like a cyber drone, like just make it look like a drone. Like, I don't know. I just didn't think it needed to be the head uh, fly. Just like, silly, you know. But mm. you know, small part. What was cool though was how quickly just the drones destroy all the doctor's weapons mm. which was nice there was the gold one you know there was some nice classic callbacks there um where they're allergic to gold and you know, yeah stuff that hasn't been really used since you know i mean classics. well no it did yeah. it got used quite heavily in nightmare and silver <laughs> oh yeah yeah the gold yeah the golden ticket yeah so yeah so, yeah, I thought it was good bleakness. The The whole design of the thing was really nice. I thought the issue with this story, though, was um, it didn't really head anywhere. So there was no arcs that were completed. You have to have part two to watch this episode. I think, I think that's the same with a lot of two parts, to be honest. But There's small <laughs> arcs, though, should be kind of, you know, all we got was more like what's going on. So what's the other side of this portal, you know? No questions got answered in this, and usually you should have some, like, you should find out something. You know, like, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, like, there should be something that's that's just completed in that. In that yeah, we just, we just, so, like, we just, Sound of Drums, we, we, we found got... out the Master's plan, End of Time, Part 1, the Master turns into everyone, we found out what the gate's being used for, you know, we found out all these kind of important details, Yeah. and small arcs finish. Um, but in this one, no kind of arcs really finished. No. Uh, small character arcs is what I mean. I don't mean the overall arc. Of course, I won't happen in part yeah. one. But like, all they did was add more and more in rather than being, okay, this is, you know, let's finish this off. Like, like uh, the death particle was like slightly hinted at in, in the first. Yeah, but it wasn't very much. Event. So you could miss that. Right. I, I, I look. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay, you finish up because I'm ready to talk Timeless Children. Oh, yeah, no, I'm not ready to talk like that, yeah. Um, I, li I like how they split everyone up. Yeah, Because, you know, they, 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 they don't... I mean, they, they do briefly, danger. but they don't do that enough. And, like, yeah, it certainly made them all far more in danger. Like, um, partic particularly in the, you know, Graham and Yaz side of the plot. You know, they were in constant, like, peril and, like... Not not that, of course, it lead to anything, but, um, I mean, it... Yeah, yeah, that whole thing, and like I, I like how it kind of this built on the law, kind of the Cybermen's law. I mean, mm. just, just, just. Oh, the opening shot actually of Ascension was sick with the helmet in space. Yes. went into the time. I was like, that was banging, and like just, just the uh, 
Ashad or, or whatever his name is, you know, um, doing that nice voiceover kind of thing about like, I can change the history of Poseidon. I was like, nice. Yes. Nice. That, that was a really strong start. That was a great way to kind of build into it all. <laughs> um, and yeah, this is why it's, I mean, I guess we'll talk a little, get a little bit into time storm, but this is why it kind of hurts that, this was a really great setup to a wonderful two-part Cyberman story, and then the master jumps out the portal, and it's like yeah. suddenly the Cyberman are background objects, and it's the I master's story it, now. <laughs> I called it early that it was going to be Gallifrey. I was like, it's yeah. definitely going to be Gallifrey, the other side of his portal. We don't know where it's going to head. I was like, it's going to be Gallifrey. It's going to be Gallifrey. I knew it. I just knew it. Um. And then, yeah, so when I kind of guessed it was Gallifrey, I was like, okay, the Master's going to come out of the portal. Like, I, I, I kind of knew the Master was going to be in there somewhere, uh, especially as he, he'd set up this timeless child. And I'm, like, I'm not going to tell you shit. And I, I was like, well, if I do the timeless <laughs> child, you know. But, um, I mean, yeah, I guess timeless children. Um, <sighs> not, I don't... <sighs> Um, I'm, uh, it's it's tough. I don't want to shit on it completely. I still think it's a strong episode in terms of what it does. It doesn't mean I like it though. But um, in terms of like technical levels, on on on. Uh, okay, so so things that I did enjoy. Um, Sasha Dwan as the master is oh, yeah, awesome. Agreed. He is so so good, and I love him. I love every every line of dialogue. He absolutely smashes out the park. Nails. Yeah. He is he is one thing which I will love to come back to this series and watch this like series. Um, is this twelve? Yeah, yes. series. 12. <laughs> I, I'm getting so lost with the numbers now. Series twelve. I will. I overall, I've enjoyed this series. I I, I have. Um, he is an excellent part of the series as well, and I really, really did. I do love his performance. Um, well, so like set design was awesome. Yeah. Music was solid, actually, for once. I did enjoy the music in this episode. I was, oh, yeah, I I enjoy music, yeah. Uh, um, Jodie's acting, Jodie was, was great, and it was nice to see her. It's better rage. when she has some bloody rage, yeah. isn't it? She finally has something, and it's it's so frustrating. It's like, just do this every freaking episode. Come on, like, well, it's not, not, no, not, not the anger every episode, but yeah, just a bit more, a bit more mm. variety on it because yeah. you know, she, she's just being. Like, throughout the two seasons, they've defaulted this kind of flat, bubbly kind of personality and not really done so much more with it. Like, there have been hints, there have been moments, but nothing like we got in this episode. Okay. Yeah, no, definitely, yes. And, um, okay, so other things I enjoyed. So, uh, the Master's Plan, good. I liked regenerating Cybermen. I liked their designs, apart from the Sad Mouth. Wasn't quite a fan of that. The rest, I, 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 I like them. <laughs> if, I, if I had a problem with the other ones being over-designed, it was... Yeah, quite... but my point is, is the master designed these. And if if the master was designing them, he definitely would go... It, it was in character for this yeah, guy to design these, it's in you know. Character. It's if in you hated character. the Time Lords so much, of course he was going to make a mockery of them, making the, you know, have them have this headset. And, you know... I thought, you know, I, I really, I was like, that's a fucking cool design. It's something that hasn't been done before, you know. You yeah, know, but I got to admit, like, the, fir the first time they walked out, I, 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 I audibly chuckled because I... they were so silly. <laughs> I couldn't I take them seriously, like not in the slightest. It's like you can't. <laughs> that's not a threat. That's a carnival parade. <laughs> I think. Um, I, I. I found, I guess, yeah, in terms of how they looked, but it was in terms of their concept, I did find threatening. I was like, shit, well, if they can regenerate, you're basically fucking screwed against these side men. Like, I believe these side men are way more dangerous than the Nightmare and Silver ones ever prove themselves. The Nightmare and Silver ones were just so annoying because, like, you know, they just die and they'd be like, oh, upgrade in progress. You know, it was just flat. It didn't feel like, like having Time Lord bodies. Like, that is, like, they're like the ultimate race, or so we thought. Well, um, I was going to be killed, though, as has as so, obviously been proved by the fact that, A, the Master killed all of them, and then, of course, the, the things in the time. Which, yeah, frustrates me. So, okay. So, uh, I enjoyed that. 
Uh, that's pretty. Yeah. Um, okay. Like, there's, there's a few, a very few moments where we did get a continuation of the Cyberman arc was great. With some of the strongest moments. Oh yeah. But, uh, specifically the scene where the where They're the like, half face wandered about and you know was like looking in the cages that were hiding the side bodies. I mean, that, 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 the the whole Yaz and Graham bit, like, just when they were off to the side, you know, continued to be, like, the more compelling side of it until, of course, they get to Gallifrey, too. (laughs) Um, I quite liked um, when Ryan was fighting off the Cybermen. Um, Like, and he was like, I don't want to, I'm not a fan of weapons. I I quite like that. That was a good, you know, learning from the Doctor moment. Yeah. And then he was like, well, you're going to fucking have to, mate. And he was like, shit, okay. Like, you know, sometimes you just have to. You can be a pacifist some days, but these guys are going to kill you if you if you, if you you sit down, you know, and just let them come. Um, okay, my issues, I'm going to do the more, I'm not going to do the timeless child bit. That's going to be the end bit, because I know that's the bit we're going to talk about most. Yes. <laughs> so, okay, my issues with it. One, the ending uh okay the way that ashard is i think it's ashard the the side man the human yeah I think um so. the way he is pushed to the side and this connects to my other issue because this would perfectly fix it and i don't know why they didn't do it so the master you know turns him into a tiny mastery uh toy thing um ah oh, what is it what's it called tissue compression. that's it yeah um does that and it was a funny moment like the line where it's like oh i should have you know said that line oh well and you know fine but what annoys me is that it was just so sudden like you had this yeah. lone side man built up for so long and then he's just shrunk like just i feel like, like i feel what should have happened in this story okay hear me out mm. is that instead of the old guy just coming in at the end and uh you know, taking it from the Doctor, who the Doctor wouldn't have let die. Mm. Like, that, it was really out of character. Unless, unless it was far more... T- I mean, that was the thing, right? The way they built up the old man was like, you almost think there should have been more to him. Like, yeah, maybe I, he was a surviving Time Lord or something, you know? You no, know, something like that. They, and they, like... They had, there was like a hint that he knew or kind of had more to him than what was hinted at, and he just never went anywhere with that. Yeah. He just killed him in the end. So what... I thought should have happened was that the the Cyberman was disgusted by these Time Lord Cybermen and was like, right, this is the end of Cybermen, and he kills them because he had the emotions to do it. If he was disgusted by what he saw, yeah, you could have had him march in, snatch it from the Doctor, and just detonate it, and then the Doctor has to run, you know, super fucking quickly to get into a TARDIS and escape, kind of thing. Yeah, you know, that would that would that would have been a good payoff to the whole Cyberman for motions thing. Yeah, and the lone side, like, and it's like I'm just like, oh, how could he not have seen that? How could you have not seen that plot point? I know he had to get the thing out of the Master had to get the Cyber thing out of it, but say if he'd given it willingly to the Master, the Cyberman's like, okay, I'm gonna go along with your plan. We, I... or, or, or the or the computer for the, that was logical or whatever. Yeah, logical to do this, and then he's disgust, and then he kind of runs off like, oh, I've been abandoned. What's my purpose? At the end, he's disgusted, comes in, boom, like yeah. it works so much more in in a in a. Uh, in a story level, it just works so much yeah, better. Give the Cyberman more purpose beyond, <laughs> and, it, and it gives him. It's like, oh, watch out for the lone Cyberman. Ah, oh, actually, I didn't have to watch out for him because he was actually the same. You know, like mate, Jack was wrong. You know, like, it, and it's weird that Jack's warning was that. Like, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't see how that. Where did he even get that from? Yeah, you know, I, I don't get that. It's like now it feels like Jack was just completely pointless. Kind yeah. of. Yeah. Like, there was <laughs> like. What should have happened is this Lone Side Man did something which had effects for the rest of a series, you know, like, yeah, killed the human race. That Lone Side Man, because he won, killed, you know, extinct. He practically did. I mean, to be fair. Yeah, they almost did. I mean, we know that they come back, but like, like, yeah. And they, they're not even going to begin to think about how that works in the timeline. It just, it just uh, works so much better on a story level just having him not the old guy because then the doctor's like well it's a robot i'm not killing it i'm not letting a human being die i'm letting a cyberman who has barely any emotions 
kill us. Mm. You know, it, it just feels different. Like, why would the doctor let this old man die? Oh, because I'm old and I've been around the block a few times, so let me die. I, I guess it was just on the count of, well, it's about to go off any second and he's no, not no, no. going to move. It wasn't go off any second. It was the Doctor had the full detonation. It was push the button yeah. and they die. It wasn't like a ticking bomb or the Doctor yeah, would have thrown it in yeah, and run. Yeah. So it was. It, it, yeah, it just would have worked so much better having the Cyberman redeem it. I, I can't believe it. They, they, they didn't see that as 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 a as a arc. I I I don't get it. The Cyberman was so disgusted that they would not become true Cybermen that he was like, this is fucked up. Hmm. And kills them all like that. That would be better. That's, that's like a Dalek kind of thing, you know. Like, oh, these aren't pure. I'm gonna kill them. You know, that's yeah. that's, that's the, the whole thing about these purity, and that's why they were trying to change, convert everyone so they're all the same. So yeah. if you're suddenly converting Time Lords, like they're not the same as converted humans, you know. Or what are the Cyberman's plans eventually? What convert every single fucking different alien in the world you know they just care about the human body like mm. that body which dies so quickly the human body you know what 70 years if you're lucky like you know our modern you know health technology is is good but you know the average human life is pretty short and that's why the cybermen are like well you know you're losing so much potential that's why we're going to convert you all yeah whether you like it or not they don't fucking care about other species. They're not going to go over to the fucking, you know, Rocks Corocophalopatorius and start trying to convert Slovene. They don't care about that. That would be an they're... interesting plot line. Or, or do they? Kind of weird that's, alien. that's my thing. Do they care about that? Like, what do they care about? What don't? And that's the thing. If if you if in this story they made it specifically that they don't care about other species, they just care about converting you... human bodies. Well, and they and clearly time lords. But um, no. I mean that. Uh... Care they shouldn't care about converting time yeah, exactly. they don't die because awesome. they're not there's there's no need to convert them mm, yeah that's true they're not pure <laughs> like because they don't need it because because that's the point it's like the yeah. point of putting you in this metal body is so you live forever time lords pretty much live forever anyway so it would have worked as like a these guys they're not you know this isn't what i wanted boom blow it up the doctor gets out and it just it works better thematically and just in terms of the character of the doctor um so that's my biggest qualm minus obviously that the, the thing coming up um mm. <laughs> anything else you want to say because i, I want to kick off the time uh, any other neck um oh the jadoon getting on the tardis that was fucked up as well oh yeah yeah How well, the fuck that? You, you, you know I mean, that's the thing. You remember that whole story idea I was talking about where a series starts with yes. the beach? <laughs> it was like, I know. wait a I second. Did, I did think about wait that. a second. <laughs> They're <laughs> starting a series under the captivity of Did You Do and the Shadow Plot Commission. Do you know, hmm. I'm thinking that prison might be Sharda. That's what, yeah, I saw that a few times on Twitter as well, actually. Wouldn't a few people cool? think that would be a cool thing. And it'd be like the dots would be like, did this happen? No, I remember it. But was I the? Was it my fourth incarnation? No, I wasn't because technically there is no fourth incarnation. <laughs> a, you know, okay, but, yeah. But, so okay, uh, so timeless child, right? Mm. Okay, doesn't break canon. Okay, okay, it doesn't break the canon. Is... It fits. Doesn't mean that I like it. Parts I like parts i don't like it's it's, it's a weird one yeah. so so okay. um i'm fine with there being d like this life before william hartnell fine whatever that had always been hinted at in the classic era let's let's not pretend like brain and morbius well, happened. well what i don't like morbius. okay what i don't like what i don't like what i don't like was that the doctor was called the doctor before william hartnell i feel like once the doctor's memory was wiped, all of that wasn't called the doctor before then. Because imagine if you became a brand new person, you'd be completely different. You wouldn't twice choose this name, the doctor. Like, I feel like the doctor is the, from the first doctor. When he was a child, he chose that. And that's why we've got da, 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 now the, the 13th doctor. That is why this is Doctor Who, because it is these 13 people who from number one decided, I am going to call myself the Doctor. I am the first Doctor. Now my issue is, is with the Roof Doctor, this fucks up everything kind of thing, with, with, with at least the naming of Doctor Who. 
because my issue is is fine you could you could have this character because because the doctor was completely wiped turned back into a child because all of this happened that's fine i can get on board with that i can i I'm can gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna i'm gonna start in a minute but i'll let because, you finish because the point is is that if you were completely wiped blank slate you'd like it like a hard drive you could have all these you know on a hard drive imagine it's like a hard drive and you completely wipe it it is blank whatever you put on there is brand new to start with whatever you know it's like reincarnation really isn't it so it doesn't to me that doesn't affect the doctor as a character my issue is though is that um it's like stuff's passed over now like the name for doctor and roof having a fucking police box that fucking pisses me off like you don't have to show it is a police box to be like this is the doctor and that's that's the issue that's the issue because I get why he had to call Roof Doctor the Doctor, so that the audience would be like, hey, it's the same person. Because if they didn't have that, how would they discover that, oh, wait, I am, this is, you know, you'd have to do a much more thing, like they check their genetics and they're exactly matching. Well, the Doctor can sense other Doctors. Exactly, that's the other thing. Um, So so I'm fine with the blank slate. I can get on board with that, 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 you know... The Doctor had all these lives before it. However, I don't like the fact that it's a timeless child and uh, now that the Doctor's this special thing, what made the Doctor special was he was just, slash she, was just another being in this race of people and they decided, no, I don't like this, I'm out and I'm gonna, you know. And that's the issue Doctor Who keeps trying to make as we were discussing, this was our main thing, even the issue with like the Russell T stuff and even, you know, towards the end of the Senf Doctor era, they keep trying to make this doctor, doctor, the doctor, a special kind of entity who's somewhat more special than everyone else. That isn't what makes the doctor special. What makes the doctor special is, you know, he, she is the same as every other time. Lord, they just choose to be different. They aren't different. Like, that's the issue. Like people are like, mm. being special isn't because you're different if you're different that doesn't make you special what makes you special is the choice that you make if you're the same as everyone else like that's that's what makes it so special and that's that's what inspires people is i can be this person i can be this super you know person it's why iron man is a lot more liked than maybe um captain america because iron man is just a genius who, who makes these suits like any idiot with the iron man suit could be iron man you know like that's why i think people on that level are like he's fucking awesome because they because you're a bit that you're that step closer you don't have this superhero serum i get the doctor can regenerate but apart from that you know it's i don't know it felt like the doctor wasn't a special you know special edition time lord kind of thing um it's fine the time lords in my opinion having this this background where you know they found this child i would have been fine with the timeless child concept as long as it wasn't the doctor you know because it would have been interesting the doctor having to go off and try and find this timeless child and find out where did i come from or at least part of me come from what is you know that's that i'm fine because the time lords like try and hide stuff all the time you know their background that's completely that's you know that's in line with what the time lords would do trying to hide their past because they're too ashamed to admit the truth that they didn't actually get these powers from staring at the time vortex, which, you know, always seems weird that they magically could regenerate their genetics from looking at the time tear, you know, so that I can get on board. I just don't like the doctors, a special thing. And I don't like that. Roof had the fucking TARDIS, um, you know, the phone box and calls herself the doctor. I don't like that. I, you know, that stuff I don't like, but so it's, it's, it's tough because I'm like 50, 50. But yeah, you you go ahead. Okay, right. So I guess to start with, um, the whole Matt Smith finale trilogy is entirely oh, pointless. Yeah, like, the entire thing is just pointless. Like Chib Chib, I I just see Chibnall here watching those episodes and like while well, everybody's celebrating, like yeah, this is so cool. They brought back Gallifrey. Oh, they're finally going to the regeneration limit and everything. Chib was just there, like, no, I don't I don't like this. It, when I take over, I'm gonna make all this pointless and so he did and it's like retrospectively those three episodes are now basically worthless and that will honestly affect rewatches of those that's to start yeah. with 
Secondly, the whole changing the idea of like making the thirteen generations like a limit felt kind of really like a very arbitrary point there because like I mean on the one hand yeah I mean I, I kind of get it like what what is it in them that restricts them to that many lives but at the same time it's like I I, I don't hmm. um I don't particularly mind that. I, I it's it's fitting of time or like that whole segment. I mean, it was very dialogue heavy, and that kind of pissed me off. Um, that's enough of a qualm with this episode. It's very dialogue talking to myself, Doctor Crap, which is just it's lazy writing. It's like I'm going to tell the audience what's going on. I'm about to blow up the Matrix. I'm about to do this. I'm about to do. It's like fucking just show us it. We can pick up what you're doing. Yeah. Okay. That's that's something which annoyed me. But um, yeah. That's I I get it's it's. It, it's hard, yes. The Matt Smith thing, like, you could either argue, well, they pretended to give him a new re- regeneration cycle, or when they wiped him, they they actually removed the ability for him to, to you know, regenerate loads and actually... Because this is my issue. This, this is my other issue. So, wait, the Doctor has two hearts as well as the Time Lords having two hearts? But they're different species. But, uh, yeah. Like, I mean, I'll, I'll talk more about that in a sec, but... <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's... It's so many. It brings up so many questions. I mean, yeah, you do bring up the Morbius Doctors, and they, you know, officially made those canon now. Yeah. And I don't like it, to be quite that frank. Way, like, it was just, uh, like, it was the, just the, whole... the cast and crew, wasn't it? It was just the crew behind the camera. Yeah, it was. But... but it was it was all the writers and everything. So I think you had like Terence Dix and Mar- like, like, all of them just like get into costumes and pretend to be a doctor, <laughs> but. That's canon now. Um, I I just don't particularly like the backstory, and I yeah I don't like it's a doctor being the charmless child, because like okay so well I, I guess you go at this from two angles one in terms of the time lord society and one from the doctor's perspective. So firstly they they've basically removed the importance of Rachel and Omega from the whole thing. Like, seemingly um, they're not really important to the Gras- Grassalon was just the president. No, I disagree Omega... with that. I disagree with that because they still discovered, you know, time travel and space travel after they, they'd done these things. Mm. It didn't, they didn't remove anything because they showed that they built the, you know, the Citadel and all that after this re- regeneration stuff happened. Yeah. Like, like these guys were still important to the time world advancing in 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 terms of their like the time world species like what I can't remember what they called them before but at this point I don't feel it like it damages anything time lord wise I think I think it was very fitting it what's strange is that the time lords had this this uh this group of people that actually got involved with stuff um you know like the doctor signed up to this this as a as a point I make this is something I thought of. Um, Rashalon's whole thing, particularly in the Five Doctors, was trying to get infinite life. Well, if this yeah. limit was arbitrary to begin with... Maybe they didn't know that. Maybe these guys came later on once the, the history had been hidden. Rashalon... I mean... Well, well it how depends on how far back. It, yeah, but Rashalon was been. part of the Great Ages of Time Lords. Like, way, way, way back. So... Like, I, I've always thought of, I mean, I, I don't know what, if they've ever established, like, just how far back Rashalon goes. But I, I always thought about him being, like, very kind of close to the beginning of the whole thing, you know. You had to and, think, like, how, how a colony starts, you know. Like, he, he wouldn't have come out of the mud and been like, I'm a fucking G. But, I'm going to discover this and that. You know, there would have been years and years of people discovering stuff and doing this, this the genetic research. Clearly, Time Lord Society and whatnot had been, like, established by the time the Doctor had been wiped and started from a new memory cycle. So surely yeah. Rashalon would have been there at that point. But so he would have known Rashalon didn't know of the Doctor. Rashalon was doing their own stuff. Imagine if it was so secret. I mean, like, you know, the ones that punished the uh, second Doctor were just a split-off group anyway. Yeah. You know, like, I, I can believe all these things happen. I don't particularly... I. 
that's not where my qualms are. My qualms, I'm fine with whatever that they do. Like with but, the, I'm, I'm pissed off that they killed all the time lords, and the, and we don't oh, know how yeah, Master we, did that. That pisses we, me yeah, off. Yeah, we never get get but any explanation on in that. In terms of the backstory, I'm fine with that. I'm fine that they discovered this genetics. It, it, maybe from a time lord perspective, it's not not so bad. But yeah, the fact it was like the fact that they. Well, in terms of the way, it, yeah, it it led to discovering Time of Society, I get, but the fact that the fact is more the yeah, roof so, doctor stuff that annoys me. The, that stuff that gets well, in, in a way. I mean, it's okay. I'm trying to try to collect my thoughts. <laughs> it's it's, it's, yeah, tough. Yeah, it's a lot to think about. It is. The fact that they got it from one random child that fell through a portal, and like yeah. that, how they led to their whole society coming to be, it's like that seems like such a weird like explanation to the whole thing. How did they get their regenerations? Was it some sort of mineral? Was it like some sort of power in the universe? No, it was just a random. Well, it's a bit like the Krillin thing, isn't it? At a place, that and that's they... the thing. Like, I get the master's um, anger then in this episode. Yeah. And no remorse, like he's disgusted that the doctor's actually part of him. That I kind of, I was like, that's decent. You know, that's that's okay. I get, I get why he'd be so enraged. Like that. Makes sense. But yeah, the fact that and you and you touched on this a bit, but yeah, this is a point that I initially like was really going off at was yeah, yeah, the doctor doesn't need to be special yeah like the doctor, that's what the makes doctor the doctor never, special ne- to, the doctor never needed to be special like it's what like i know a lot of people didn't even like the plan which they wanted to do for the seventh doctor right a lot of people think it was like dumb at least as far as twitter was concerned a lot of people were like oh this is stupid uh they, they never go this route but i think this is like a thousand times worse in terms of like getting the doctor's character together because at least there he was part of a collective that brought together time or society from the start right he was it wasn't just like the doctor was a random being from a completely different place and they took the just suddenly appeared and oh you know infinite regenerations and suddenly yeah see, uh, see, I, 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 I hate i hate Doctor needs to be more than just a Time Lord. Lord the yeah. whole thing, the whole thing that was so compelling about the Doctor, yeah, as you say, was like kind of. But you could be this that, person. But it, it's just the fact that the Doctor, beyond like the Time Lords, were a race of beings that were more content with watching and like yeah. just viewing the universe, just just by themselves. And the Doctor, partially due due to wanting to see what's out there. And partly due to a sense of moral justice, and running is someone... from the hybrid. <laughs> That's basically non-existent. No. But uh, uh, basically, yeah, due to these factors, goes out into the universe and does the right thing because that is what they feel is right. Yeah. And you know that, that it's the whole moral compass and stuff. There's nothing special beyond being this alien but like beyond especially like in the first few like throughout most of Doctor Who there isn't beyond regeneration there isn't that many special powers it's just kind of someone who's seen things someone who's experienced and weary and like who wants to um help and wants to bring justice and right in the universe just some of these you know who believes it and that was what was so compelling about the character you know the Doctor, for all intents and purposes, could have been content to sit back and, you know, just follow, just watch, just like the rest of the Gallifrey and, and the rest of the Time Lords. But the Doctor doesn't, because the Doctor you know, believes there's so much more to everything, so much more to the universe. And, you know, that was what added layers to this character. So the fact that a the doctor has been doing this since before, you know, it was like the timers were doing this anyway. You know, the doctor was not. This wasn't just like a random thought. Yeah, you know, this wasn't just a doctor wanting to go out there and help, or even that. You know, with Susan wanting to take her off Gallifrey and make her, you know, maybe get, have her a better life that wouldn't involve this stuff. You know, it no, it wasn't any of that. The doctor was doing this beforehand anyway. You know, the timers would make him go out there and you know. Yeah. Self rights in the universe. It, it, the, the first Doctor's decision wasn't special because the Doctor was doing this anyway. You know, and whatever. So was the Doctor. That is, see, that's my qualm. That is because you, you lose it and you're like, oh well, you could just always. And that's the issue. Imagine if you were reading a book, 
and you read like the first five chapters, then chapter six is like, okay, what you thought the was the beginning? Okay, that was completely wrong. Okay. And you're like, okay, fine, I can get on board with it. And imagine three chapters later, it's like, okay, I was I was lying in chapter six. There's even more before it. And it's, that's the issue. You can't keep adding to the beginning of a story. Like, you can't do that. Yeah, because where especially, do you go from especially here? Especially when it's a character arc. That's even more fundamental. You can't keep going back and change. Maybe you can reveal small details, but not a whole, oh, now you had so many lives and you've never bumped into yourself before. Exactly. Like, if, he was, if, the, if she was able to bump into Ruth now, why did that never happen before? Yeah. So that is that's my qualm. I'm fine, and uh, it would have been okay. I just, I just so don't if, like if it. They like... Didn't, if they didn't have Roof, okay. If Roof wasn't in this story, and the master just turned around to the doctor and said, "You're the timeless child," they could they could still have gone and actually changed it that the doctor actually isn't the timeless child, and the timeless child is something completely different or someone completely different. Hmm. Imagine that. Imagine if if actually. The Doctor, and just for a series, we were led to believe that the Doctor was this special being, and then we find out, actually, she's not. I would be so on board with that, but, but the issue with the roof... And then, and then you make that... somebody interesting who's exactly. actually the timeless you know. child. Like, when somebody you don't expect... <laughs> not, not the master or anything, but, like... Um... Like... No, just a new character, just a new <laughs> being. You, you know what, what would have been, like, the biggest twist on it? Would have been, like, maybe someone like Morbius... Because yeah. someone who's that demented and twisted, like, had been being experimented on from the beginning of, you know, Morbius' life and, like, tortured and tormented becomes this ruthless, horrible person. Who, yeah, that would have been... Something like that, actually, would have been far more interesting if that was the timeless the child. And we could have been led to believe that the Doctor was this timeless child, and, you know, but then you could do it, go, actually, no. The, the Doctor is just one of these Time Lords, and, you know, Gallifrey is the Doctor's home. Because now, what are we searching for the next Gallifrey? Like, what? Yeah, are we searching for the Doctor's real home? We, just, we already did the searching for Gallifrey shit. Yeah. Now... Well, we did. We did. We didn't do the searching for Gallifrey shit. Well, yeah, because it's Moffitt, fucking Moffitt, boring. Moffitt, Moffitt, it's it, boring having to. No, it, 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 Stephen it, it, Moffat it, it, summed it up pretty well. In he was talking about why he didn't keep doing looking for Gallifrey. Because all it would be in the episode is like opening a cover, being oh not here. Closing it and then going to the next cupboard. It would, it would, it, there's not True. much story you can but do. We should it. have done far more once we found Gallifrey. That's yes. the thing. That's, because, that's the difference. Because I think, I think it would have been far more compelling if the doctor maybe had, as opposed to just going to Gallifrey, picking up Clara and dashing off and then never talking about it again. Yeah. Like, maybe if he actually tried to set up a new society, kick Rashelon off and maybe, you know, set up a new Gallifrey. Like, have something build, have like hope for the future, have the, you know, because he's always hated. Gallifrey and the Time Lords usually throughout most of his life. That's the thing. It's like the Doctor missed it, and now he can has the opportunity to go and like make a better Gallifrey. And he had that had that opportunity, but we never touch on that. And now Gallifrey's destroyed, and Doctor's just like looks kind of sad. And that's the issue. The Doctor like the Doctor acts so betrayed by the Time Lords, but it's like, is this? Are you really surprised that they've done something like this? It's like if the Doctor had been maybe getting on with them a bit more. You know, actually showing some presence there and being like, oh, we're getting to a good society. And then finds out, oh, shit, you've lied to me my whole life. Yeah, exactly. Somewhat more that interesting. Been, and if that review had come with the Time Lords still alive, even. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. With you somebody know, to actually bounce off beyond just the Master's word for it. And that's the like, thing. Not, not that most of even the Timeless would have known anything about this. I mean, that, that's the big thing. Who actually ever knew about this? Yeah, exactly. Because we, we don't know. Who, well, clearly who would... no one who's appeared before. Potentially. It was that buried and deleted from Time Lord. You know. Despite the fact that if the Doctor had multiple lives, then clearly it would have been over a long period of time, and therefore somebody... Sh and besides, the Time Travellers! Like, if they need this information, can't they just see go not back messing, and see it? Not messing with your own past. Well, no, no. I don't mean the Doctor, but I mean, like... No, no, but I mean, the Time Lords would have been like, that's too risky, going back to our own past. Mm. That's that's why the whole Father's Day thing, it makes sense, you wouldn't go back but, and... I mean, the whole time keeps changing, I mean, especially in the Time War, the whole time... Well, that's a different... That the whole a... time itself kept changing anyway, so it's yeah. like... Well, they wouldn't have been concentrating on them, their past, would they? They'd be going back in time into their own timeline to fight the war, not to, you know, that was survival. They weren't thinking, oh, let's do a history trip. Look, I'm, no, but surely I'm just, some sort yeah. of 
you know, reconnaissance, like, we gather this information for war, maybe we could use this, like, strategy. You know, yeah. they, they, would, they would have found out, like, well, what's happening at this point in time? Who are the yeah. people here? What time, you know, should we, what specifically should we protect in order to keep the balance of time flowing and the Daleks not from winning? You know, and surely at some point it would have been like, oh, there's another Doctor here. Funny that. <laughs> that we don't know anything about. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, yeah, I just, yeah. At it's, least the Doctor was going out there problem. doing missions again, you know. Yeah. You would, you would have seen that at some point with time travellers. And calling themselves the Doctor. It's just, yeah, that's, see, that's my issue. I would have been fine with lives, you know, whatever, the Doctor having all these lives before. Like, the con- like, I know, I know technically it works, but I, I, just, I know. It's not the best concept. I'm not, I'm not a fan of it, but I'm okay with it. I can get on board with it, that, you know, white start I, I, from scratch. I, 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 like, whatever. Yeah. But then, but then the Doctor shouldn't be the Doctor. So when Ruth's there, and, and like, the Doctor was like, oh, I don't use weapons, and the Doctor's like, I know. I'm like, No. You wouldn't know because you're not the same person. Mm. If you were white from to to scratch, and not gonna lie, the Time Lords would know how to do that. They're not fucking dumb. Yeah, I don't care. No subconscious would pass through. If you were white, you were wiped. You know. And and even if these slight things manage to survive, like if you wipe a drive, maybe you can recover some bits. Yeah. Yeah, that's, and that's the whole um, that's other one... subplot. That was the Irish subplot. Yeah. And if you try and recover shit like that, it's not going to come out the same way as you do. But the issue is the roof doctor was exactly the same doctor as, as like, I don't know, Peter Davison at that point in the doctor's life. And it's like, that's where I get pissed off. Any doctor that came before the doctor should have been someone completely different. You know, not good morals, bad morals. All the things that the Doctor shouldn't be, basically, mm. is what this character should be. Someone who holds weapons and fires guns and follows the Time Lord's orders. You know? And then the Doctor would have that heavy regret of, oh, I used to be this person I really didn't like, and I can't even remember doing well, that. That was, well, yeah, I guess not remembering it, but that was kind of the War Doctor anyway. Yeah, that's the of. issue. That's the issue. And also, how did Clara see any of this? Yeah, yeah. Because he right. went to the Doctor's grave and went yeah. down this entire time stream and yeah. didn't see any of this. Yeah, nothing. she said she saw all eleven faces, <laughs> yeah. no, all, all twelve, whatever you know, whatever. And then, well, I, I guess the Doctor can block parts of it out. But if the Doctor, if she knows about it now, then by the time the Doctor dies, then you would know, and that then be. But that of... grave no longer exists. Because yeah, they changed it, but it still happened at that point. Yeah, a life still occurred that she would have seen. Yeah, these it other... would have happened. Yeah, it was, if, if that's your whole time stream, that's your whole time stream. <laughs> the issue is though, is if you do what I do like about this finale is it did take a risk with the storytelling, and fine, fine. A risk like, with the whole franchise. That's. <laughs> I I see. I. It's tough. It's tough. They because, they handled because, some bits fine. If if they if they hadn't had the roof doctor with the with the, the with the police box TARDIS, I would have been fine with Doctor's existing well, enough a character. Same person. Like they, they could have just discovered it a different way, like their genetics were the same. Like, oh, you can't use this machine unless you're me. And then roof character managed to use it. You know? That would have been fine. Like, how how is this possible? Then she does a DNA check. Which is like, we are the same person, what the fuck? But the issue is, when you call them the Doctor, and you give them a police box, it's the same character, and it's just... Ah, uh, it's just... That I can't get on board with. That is where it's that it's gone too far. I'm fine with changing the Time Lords. I'm t- fine with having this timeless child. I'm not fine with it being the Doctor. It, and that's, that's my issue with this finale. I'm like 50%... I, I'm okay with it, but then the other 50... And that's why I'm kind of... I don't hate it as much as last series finale because last series finale was just utter. Cr- there was nothing I can enjoy from it. At least within yeah, this yeah. one, there was some I, enjoyable bits. It's, it's not it's the last cons- series finale was not as objectively bad as this, but it it didn't make me nearly as frustrated. I don't think. Yeah. And like, I don't. Know, it just changes the context of like so much, practically yeah. everything like you know you're gonna sit there and think of everything like you've seen before differently and i mean 
you know, for some people that's fine, but as someone who's sunk so much time, you know, energy and stuff and, and everything, to suddenly be turned around and gone, everything's wrong, the doctor's this is not absolutely, absolutely everything, you know, it's like there is a time to do that, right? And yeah. in certain franchises it you know, works if you do it on a certain time frame, but yeah. once you got to almost 60 years <laughs> and it, it, it's it's very difficult to it's dump this you're... whole this much like you're the on the balance. You're on the balance of do it uh, of being um, with withheld with all the 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 canon and stuff. Like if I'm going to follow every single rule, you're never going to be able to make anything bigger. But the issue is, is they keep trying to add things at the beginning of a story rather than maybe part way through the story or at the end. Yeah, I, I I think I think the far more compelling thing is just pushing interesting stuff in for the future and not going back and constantly tinkering with what happened before. Yeah, exactly. Like, they didn't need to do this. They could have just found, like, an interesting point for the future or, you know, like... I mean, I would have been fine with them adding a little bit before. Like, you know, maybe maybe, maybe, maybe that Hartnell's, Hartnell's doctor, like, when he was younger, did far more than, you know, was ever let on. But, like, adding all these extra lies and extra things, I just... I just... I don't know. I, I just don't like it, to be quite frank. Like, I, I can't... I can't explain it in a very, you know, very intellectual, interesting yeah. way, I don't think. In that, I, in that regard. Like, I know, I know you're fine with it, but it's, uh, it just, uh, it's just gonna fine, throw fine is a different me. thing. I can get on board with it, and I can be like, fine. Mm. I can be fine. It doesn't mean I like it, mm. but fine. The there, there, Doctor had all these lies before. Because when you wipe something from scratch, it is, it's fresh. You know, if you rip out a piece of paper or you you know, you know you rub it out, rub out your pencil drawing, whatever, it's gone. It's that's, bit... that's gone. You're starting from scratch. It's, it's fine. It's... That's fine. It's the fact that it was the... I would call myself a doctor and I have a poli- police box. Why the fuck does she have a police box? She was not on that junkyard. Unless um, Prisoner of the Jadoon was set in the 1960s. Would I have been okay with her having a police box? Yeah, because then that would have been fine. Okay, unless the town has been buried there since the nineteen sixties. <laughs> yeah, so, I guess, but like, uh, what? Why? What? So that's that's my issue with it. It's, yeah, and that, then, I mean, that's if you where to... my issues come in. And also, I think they partially wanted to. Again, wanted to tie in a little bit with the doctor hinting that there was more before and whatnot, like with the Sylvester McCoy stuff, like kind of taking that and going, well, that applies here. But of course, the doctor wouldn't have known that. Yeah. And we still don't get much explanation for the Pan of Omega stuff and whatnot. Because <laughs> of course, he went back as the first doctor to go and bury that and whatnot and just to keep it. Yeah, it's like, was that. I mean, I'm not thinking that much. It's just going to hurt my brain if we do keep going. The issue with I mean, Doctor Who... Of course, it brings it, up it, all it, these it, questions. And, like... Canon's going to be broken at some point. But the issue is, is when it, it, it takes away, it's fine changing the canon as long as it doesn't affect what's come before it. And I feel this yeah. completely affects the yes. time war and all that because now Gallifrey is no longer the Doctor's home. Yeah. So the doctor would look back and at the time lord and be like, "Oh well, fucking hell, I don't care. I'm not a time lord." Yeah, that's that's my issue. And it's like, how, so they all have two hearts. Now, what you could do is you can go, okay. So what is the species on the other side of this this portal barrier? Okay, what if we discover that those are the real time lords? Like they're this species which actually has been watching it the whole time, or enough a dimension in enough a parallel universe time lords who saw that they had to send this child, this completely normal child for them, to help this other species start off. Then, the Doctor isn't special, she's just enough a child of enough a species. That's the thing, it's just, um, it, my, my qualms are that the, the, the Doctor being the Doctor before the wipe, and, and the Doctor being too special. Those are my big issues with the Timeless Child stuff. The rest I could get on board with, not that I particularly like it, but I can accept it and move on. Um, because you kind of have to. I mean, it's canon now, and there's no point mm, kind of, you know, 
saying much about it because they're going to do what they want and it's fine. Well, I just I complain don't... about it. I mean, that's what we do as fans, right? <laughs> yeah, I just I don't like that they they feel the need to make the doctor this um uh omnipresent kind of thing. Yeah, I, I I mean I see what they're doing. It adds back to the Doctor Who, who is a timeless child. I get that. I get that. Fine. I can understand their viewpoint and the angle they're going at. It's trying I think, to I think you mentioned this in like the Snapchat, and you were like something on the lines of adding back in the mystery and whatnot. And it's but like it doesn't way. because it, it we just had like so like that. Because of course everything kind of pre what we saw in 1963 is a bit of a mystery, right? Not anymore. And now everything's laid bare beyond the Doctor's real origins, basically. Yeah. But like the entire really of the Doctor's real life, you know, it's like we basically get like maybe we don't know the purpose of like what the Time Lords were sending out like, to I do. I thought it was so. weird having the theme play when she was breaking the Matrix, so kind of a bit. I don't know. It's a bit on the nose, wasn't it? A bit on the nose. I think if I was ever gonna, I don't know, I'm not gonna say my idea in case I write it one day because I have a really <laughs> nice, I have a really nice way on how you could bring the theme to be like actually in the thing and it not feel too ham-fisted like it was there. It was just a bit weird that, but yeah, I mean, production design was nice, <laughs> but uh, and, uh, cliffhanger was a bit lazy, but whatever. Mm. Daleks again. Re- okay. Revolution. Revolution. I'm like, oh my god, I'm getting really confused. So we Resurrection. Have... <laughs> Revelation. We've had resolution. Resolution. Yeah, resolution. Now, um, wait, is it re- resolution and resol- revolution? Yeah, that's it. We had resolution. Now, revolution. Like, let's and now we need this. retribution. Yeah, retribution. <laughs> Runaway Dalek. <laughs> <laughs> Oh goodness! I don't know. I just, I was, I was so excited, like after Ascension of the Sidemen, because yeah. like it's like this is really good. I'm down. I'm, I'm actually feeling like I'm ready. I'm ready. And this episode's just taken all the wind out of my sails. It really has. It's like it's frustrating because actually overall it was a solid series. I think like. It's a step up on last. So year. Prisoner of the, J- of the Jadoon gets retroactively no. worse again. Yes, <laughs> it yeah. really now it does. I mean, I, I, I didn't, I didn't think it was very good to begin with. But even I, I was, I was trying to not judge it until the rest, but now it is poo. Yeah, it's I like I don't I like because mean... I don't like the roof dogs. So nothing against the actress, by the way. I think yeah. she's great. It's I just don't like the 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 yeah, what they've decided to do with this character. Yeah, and I. Mean... <sighs> So, some bits of it were good, but I'm not going to look back on this series fondly now. Not, 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 especially not how I ended, you know. Um, do you look at Series 9 fondly, though? Because, I mean, Hellbent was awful. Yeah, but then it was also preceded by probably one of the strongest episodes in Doctor Who history. So, I mean, that kind of balances mm. out in that regard. This 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 series didn't have that. Essentially, it was really good, but it wasn't it wasn't heaven well, it wasn't sent. Heaven sent no. It was nowhere near heaven sent. Hard level, level to get to. Not, uh, not even like <laughs> Yeah. <sighs> Yeah. You know, yeah, I don't know, just, just, I felt good about Dot 2 for a little bit there, and, and, then, and then Chibnall smacked me in the face. <laughs> and you let me guard like... down, and then you pulled the rug. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Anything Dot 2 I think I'm looking forward to now is the faceless ones animation. And that's yeah. Kind of it, really. <laughs> it's like, gosh, I'm... That's out soon, isn't it? Yeah. It is. There was another trailer for it. Oh, Some... I missed that. I've been busy. Yeah. But yeah. Um, yeah. I guess that kind of wraps it up, really. We can kind of go on about it, but mm-hmm. I think it's just more time, really. I'm excited to see the Dalek. Apparently, um, rumor is Graham and Ryan are going to leave after this episode. Which would Maybe. be nice if, if just Yaz stays, because then we can actually... Yeah, I think one of them should have been killed. Graham should have died. They yeah. even set it up. 
That's the thing, but the it Cyberman, just made yeah. sense with the Cyberman. Just use the human. It was right, staring them in the face. Just, just pass it over by Again, hand. This, this could have been an excellent Cyberman story, but they. It was fine having all the time. It was but just. But then we had like a ton of exposition. It's like... Yeah, it was exposition heaven, which well, I also. We had, we, had such, we had such a cool setup to a Cyberman story, and then we just get a bunch of talking about Gallifrey for an hour. It's like. <laughs> That, that's why this what hurts this episode. Like it was, it was well done as far as exposition was concerned. But it's nevertheless just a bunch of exposition. Like it wasn't good exposition, really. When you look at it, it's lazy writing. Was, it was. It, it's it's just lazy. Like the whole master just telling the story. Like fine for the, the context of a show. Fine, but it's like the, it's like there's that bit where the, uh, I think it's in Ascension actually, where human Cyberman. Is goes on a monologue for about two minutes. It's like, shut up. Who are you talking to? The other side men don't care. They don't have emotions. Yeah. I did like the bit actually when uh, the doctor was like, oh, I should charge for therapy. Like when she tried to psych him out, like, oh, you're not pure. And he's like, yes. And that drives him more. And she was like, oh, shit. That was a cool moment. Yeah. But yeah. Oh, it was just too exposition y. And then, yeah. yeah. So. My opinion is some bits I'm fine with, some bits I'm not, and that's the issue. I'm like stuck in the middle because I, you have to accept all of it, and that's it. But I don't want to accept all of it. I can accept some of it. I'd be like, yeah, I'm, I'm on board, fine. I, I think, you know, I, I, I would be happy if this went like the hybrid, and they just never talked about it again. Nah, there's so much more to do with this. There could be. Who is the timeless child? But... I know, I know they will, but I was just saying that I'd be okay if they did that because Jodie's gonna. It will be in her final story. Something will happen. She'll find her real species or something, and something along those lines. Imagine she was a fucking carlid. Yeah. Well, how then? They, how does regeneration adult. work? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Who knows at this point, man? Who knows? Oh, Is she an eternal? I, Is she just the Eternals? <laughs> You know, is she just the same as a toy maker? Like, fucking hell, come on. Just stop making her so special. She's normal, and that's what makes her special. Because she chooses to be good. She chooses to be more. Yeah. Beyond just another Time Lord. I mean, then you can say, oh, well, well, then they all became the same. It's like, no, yeah, but no, because then she was the first. That's the issue. It's like, that. I think their argument back would be, well, then there was plenty of other Time Lords, and because she was white, she was just the same as all of them. And plus, the other ones had all these limits placed on them, whereas the Doctor apparently doesn't, maybe? I don't know. Do- does she now? I think that's why he wrote it so ambiguously, so whoever takes over in those years' time... Could plus, like, oh, plus okay. this, whatever this, like... Scientist explorer, well, I can't remember what, what was her blimmin' name. The first don't one, I remember, don't care. Yeah, you, you know, she's a terrible person for spe- for like experimenting on this child. Yeah, no, yeah, she's never treated in a negative light. Like, she's, yeah, this is clearly a horrifically messed up person who's obsessive experimenting on this child, which they've been looking after to their complete detriment. All for the sake of basically giving herself that power, more or less, like a, for a selfish deed. Yeah. Look, what's like, going to happen is that, uh. Oh, shit. This was the lowest. Yeah, I read about it. I was, was going to bring that up, actually. This was, yeah, the lowest of the revived series. Yikes. Uh, I don't think that's going to improve after this episode. <laughs> I don't see that going up. Well, I'll do the third series with Chibnall. Then maybe he'll leave. Mm, yeah. yeah it's interesting. So, uh, yeah. In terms of I the think... podcasts, I think we're going to try and do at least one a week on different kind of topics. We'll, we'll see we what happens. Try. <laughs> we're going to try, try it for every weekend upload. Mm. Um, and yeah, we'll see. They might be long, they might be short. It'll be about whatever news is happening, or if there's no news, other topics. We're just going to talk about Doctor Who, because we like to do that. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. That's kind of our plans now. Hopefully, at least one a week. Um, and hopefully, in the background, when we've got a bit of time, work on the reviews. Yep. 
Yeah. So, I mean, how many have we recorded now? Like two? Recorded two? Yeah. And we're just going to release them as we go now. I think we're not yeah, going to stop with the batches. Because they're never going to come out if yeah. we do them in batches. Like, we'll, you will never see us again. <laughs> Gone for eternity. But yeah. Be like 70 years old. Finally, I have time Batch to finish five. this. <laughs> 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 yeah but yeah so um yeah that's that's the aim try and try and get a podcast a week at least hopefully um yeah just so we have some more regular content um of our low quality low budget podcast uh so yeah that's i guess wraps it up i don't think there's much more we can say about going around the surface really almost an hour and a half now <laughs> i think it'll be interesting to see what you guys below think do you do you understand what we're saying do you completely agree with what we're saying do you completely against you know i think every every opinion's fine in this case i think because it's valid i mean it's such a personal show some people you know i was looking at comments some people are like oh suck it up and it's yeah, now clearly, it yeah i mean yeah you know, that's the same on twitter be, you don't need to be volatile about your opinion you can be no, completely right. understanding and peaceful about. Yeah, I mean, you know, if if you if you found this a compelling starter and a we're opening of all these new passages, all the more power to you. I hope I, that I can get goes forwards, you know, sufficiently satisfies you. I'm like I'm like fifty percent but... that, fifty percent on like it's like because I can understand from a writing perspective. You, it's I just get annoyed with it. People keep adding stuff at the beginning. Like just do exactly. something forward. Yeah. Do something forward. Why was that necessary? Like I said, I, it would have, might be more interesting if, instead of just adding all these extra lies if Hartnell's Doctor had done far more before. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, because we, we've just uh, we've only known his, his Doctor as this, like, elderly old man. Old man. Yeah. A bit grumpy to start with but then softens out. What made but, him grumpy? What made him grumpy? Like, for someone to go off into the, into the world and uh, run away you didn't imagine that doctor being the guy who got up and run away like something must have happened which made him decide to stay on earth in one time period and hide well probably something something to do with the hand of omega right who knows but like that's more interesting like why did the doctor run away because he was bored yeah that's good. It's better than being scared of the hybrid. Like that's rubbish. Yeah, well, no, I, I, but like, yeah. you know, stuff like that. Like, what did what was the Doctor's childhood? That stuff you could go into. Like, at I guess a little bit. But yeah. at, the point, at this point, now we know so much about the Doctor. It's like I don't even care why. Well, in part, the Doctor isn't doctor. special now, really. No. Beyond like just being the one, like this beginning of this particular cycle. Like there've been so it's... many cycles that the Doctor's probably done like similar things beforehand. It's like. What? Why is William Hartnell's Doctor special beyond like out of universe, out of like in out of the in universe conversation being the first Doctor? But I mean, like in the context of the show itself, he's not special anymore. Like there's, yeah. you know, it's just another incarnation, one of potentially many thousands. Yeah, it's like it, it just <sighs> it's weird, but in it, it's a weird yeah. one. I yeah, it's a tough, tough thing. Like all the doctors that we spent all this time, like you know, following their adventures and you know, keen, like on their not only like the adventures on the screen but off screen and stuff like Big Finish and all the novels and stuff. And people have been like making content and they invest in these like incarnations of this character for you know since they've been on screen, right? Yeah. Is and the now issue that the Doctor told, was the same before. Now we've been told well none of them, none of them are really special beyond just being like another version of this long-standing god creature. And that's the issue. The Doctor was good before the mind wipe. The Doctor should have been bad, mm. and that would have been fine. Whatever. The Doctor had a whole life, but was wiped, and she was this terrorist who did awful, awful things. It and leaves with Morbius and stuff, you know. Yeah, you know, like. Yeah, bring me like Morbius that. into this. Like, I, I really want to see more Morbius. <laughs> so, but yeah, like, yeah, it's just, that's my issue. It's like, okay, well, if all these doctors before then, fucking hell, doesn't matter. Get rid of a numbering, just call them the doctor. There's no point having the first doctor anymore. He's just the doctor. He's just the doctor. They're all just the doctor. They're not fourth doctor or sixth doctor. We don't care anymore. They're just the doctor. Because there's no point having a numbering system if you're going to keep adding numbers before one. Yeah. This is 
Doctor Zero, and this is Doctor Minus One, and this is Doctor <laughs> Minus Two. Like, uh, you can't just go, oh, this is the Roof Doctor. Like, it's just a dumb fucking name. Because mm-hmm. adding a name before Doctor, so what? Their name's Roof, Ben. So it's not Doctor Who anymore. That's Roof. Let's just call him William Hartnell. Let's just call him <laughs> Patrick. Let's just call him like. <laughs> That's the point. That's the they lose the specialness of the name when mm. the doctors before the wipe also call themselves the doctor. So. Like it's just because that the doctor chose, you know, the person who heals. Like that was a choice of a name. Mm-hmm. But it would have been interesting if the doctor didn't actually choose his name, the doctor, until he actually left Gallifrey. Mm. What made him choose his name, the doctor? What did William Hartnell's person see? Which is like, I'm going to call myself the Doctor. Mm. That is an interesting story. Yes. You no, know, because we wouldn't have to know the Doctor's name before that. But what? Why did the Doctor choose the Doctor? Why? Mm. The issue is, is now it doesn't fucking matter because apparently the Doctor would have chose it no matter what because the Doctor was always the Doctor. Because the Doctor was always the Doctor. Because because you the Doctor couldn't have had the same experience twice. Where it's like. I'm going to choose this name. Either someone gave it to him twice, which then loses its specialness, or somehow... It's like, if you got to choose your name as a three-year-old, okay, you go back in time, and we're like, okay, comrade, or you, choose a name from this list. Decide. Here's a bunch of words. Decide your name. If we did that twice, Mm. after you'd been completely wiped, had a a completely different growing up experience, different parents, everything... Surroundings completely different. One time we brought you up in a forest, another time you brought up in a city. You would choose completely different words to be your name because yeah. you're just a different person. That's what happens. Mm. I'm sorry, people like to think like of destiny, and you're always meant to be. But I'm sorry, yeah. Your your what's so important about each human life is like how they've been brought up, their culture, their background. That is what is important. Yeah, I, I I I always I always kind of god creature i i always thought it would like i thought that the doctor would have chose his name on gallifrey but it was like something to do with the master as well like something in their childhood where they were like like i'm gonna be called this and i'm gonna be called this and you know or something yeah some yeah. some sort of event that leads to one of them going i'm gonna be called doctor and i'm gonna be called the master you know yeah but wouldn't it have been interesting if they hadn't actually chosen those names until they left gallifrey hmm what what was the events which led them to choosing their names like that's an interesting story which doesn't change anything at the beginning yeah it doesn't change anything if mm. as long as you know it's still the first doctor because he is the one who chose the name but now Ruth's the first doctor or whichever child whichever incarnation decided to call themselves a doctor and that's that is where i'm pissed off and that's mm. where i cannot get on board fine yeah. having lives before but they're not the doctor they cannot be called the doctor they cannot have a police phone box is it the same Type 40 TARDIS? It better fucking not be. Yeah, because we saw the Doctor escape on that. So that's 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 where I hate this episode. Name the do- well, again, yeah, that's another thing. <laughs> Just making those three episodes pointless. Like, it seems like he went well, out not, of his way. You can't this- uncanon those. That's the thing. They are still canon. And that's the thing. It's like, how does this fit in? And I'd love to just sit down with Chibnall and just have this discussion. Be like, so where exactly does this fit in? Like... Give me the 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 explanations. You, we have to be told. How did Roof have a fucking blue box? How how these questions have to be answered. They cannot just be left open, or it does ruin the show. Hmm. If these get answered, then I can be like, fine, at least this works. But but being called, you know, it ruins it ruins the Doctor being too special, and it also ruins the name, the Doctor. Like now it has no importance because no matter what happened, this character would grow up and always choose it because they're special. Mm. You know, I'm sorry. Like the doctor isn't special. No. Yeah. Ah, cool. Okay. Yep. That's it. (laughs) I'm going to keep going around because yeah. So yeah, comment below, but that's, that's my opinion. I can get on with the time Lords taking this child and torturing it and to get the regeneration power. That sounds very time Lordy to me. I can find whatever. Like in the early days, that sounds like something a civilization would do. Again, the Doctor's biggest hang-up isn't even that the Doctor was tortured and like made to go through all this. Because like again, that that woman traveler person is never yeah. treated as a negative, yeah, you know, thing. Despite the horrible things she clearly 
had been doing. She she was angry at the time was just simply erasing this, despite you know all the other stuff which happened before. See, I think it should have been the Olaf from the Sisterhood of Khan or something like that. Someone that she could go up and confront about it, not just this person who's long gone. Like, mm. Mm, like, where's the repercussions? You know. But I guess we'll see. It's definitely not the last we've seen of all of this. So see what happens with it, really. At the minute, this is the canon, and that's just has to be the way it is. Yeah, I think you have to. I think what's important is you have to accept at this point whether you like it or not. Because it's stupid going around going like, well, I'm not going to pretend it exists because it it happened. So mm, you you just. I know that some people say canon is down to the fans, but to me, they're like, well, then there's no point watching it because, like, well, I mean, you know, yeah, I mean, it depends on how you look at it, right? The whole death of the author thing, and you know, what yeah. people will or will not consider canon will be in their own books. Really, right? it's what appears on BBC to me is the definitive canon. What appears on BBC One is like the definitive, because that's where the most audience is gonna uh, gonna see it, really. Except for not very many audiences. It's well, yeah, very... as, as we know. But uh, that's that's where I'm like, this is the hard canon. Whatever happens here, you're just going to have to fucking... You have to just accept and move on. Whether you like it or not, that's different. I'm completely... I'm not saying anyone has to like what happens, but I think you have to just accept, like, okay, this is what they're doing. I don't like this. I'm not happy that they've done this. But you have to just be like, right, okay. This is where we are now. It's like life. You know, you might end up in a situation or in a job that you don't like. You can't just go, well, you know what? I'm just going to sit here and do nothing. Like, you have to accept the situations that you're in. Or you could pull a Terminator and just re- just pretend like certain things didn't happen. <laughs> but, like, does that does that ever really work out for the positive? No. Really? Well... You, can't, you can't really do that much in life. Whether they, yeah, but the only way that this is going to actually change for the better is if a writer goes in and changes stuff. That is the only way that really they can fix yeah. it. That that's going to make anyone happy. So yeah, I think they need to they need to define some things a bit more in the next series. I don't think that's the last we've seen of a roof doctor. No, uh, I'm if hoping. They were this time setting her up. If they were just going to have her kind of half. I in mean, one they still could pull the 180 and be like, okay, the roof doctor isn't the doctor at all. It's a completely different character. Yeah, but. Like on one hand, from a can like from a whole series point of view, I'd prefer that. But at the same time, that makes this whole thing pointless. It's like, yeah. Then it's like, well, what was the point of all this? Like, why did, why did you fragment the time, the, the whole fan base like this? If you were just going to turn around and say no, none of it was. Well, who would do that? Like yeah. that, that would that would not only you know because the, the the a lot of the dedicated old fans are like really upset about this, but you're also gonna piss off the people who are like liking this by doing that if if you then suddenly decide it's not not real, right? I mean, so you would literally have upset everyone at that point. <laughs> I mean, would you or would people be? It's it's a tough one. It's like, well, what do you do at this point? But yeah, there we go. That's it. That's it. We're going to keep going. We're going to keep going. That's it. Let's call time there. Well, I'm sure we're going to talk about this plenty in the future. Yeah. Cool time. Cool time. Right. <laughs> Hopefully, you know, podcast in a bit. We'll probably talk about the um, lightly about the faceless ones once it's released and kind of. Yeah. So, yeah. See how we think be about cool. it. Because, you know, like, I haven't been so fond of most of Pat Troughton's first series beyond, like, I think Power's good and. Power's good. Moonbase is alright. Moonbase is good. Yeah, I like Moonbase, but. What yeah, was it wasn't weird. Oh, Max Hotel was weird. That was a big dis- Yeah. I thought that story was going to be a whole lot better. Mm. Yeah, big oof. That's what marketing does. So. <laughs> I, I, I was just interested in it anyway. Like, over yeah. time, I knew nothing about it. Um, I'm glad we still got it though. I'm very happy. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. same. It's, it's nice to see you know they're doing could, it. And Fury from Deep you. scene as well. It makes Fury me, it was, from makes the me deep. happy. Some... At least that's the thing. I've dodged all these classics and like, I've dodged learning anything about them. So when they come out, I can enjoy them for like the very first time. Yeah, though not all of these are going to be like that, which is why I actually don't have it up there anymore. But like, I bought like the collections of like the audio versions of um 
some of the missing episodes just because like you know it's like i don't think they're ever gonna do like marco polo or whatever so like i might as well yeah i hope they do one day it'd be nice but i don't given what they've talked about in interviews i don't really see it happening but i mean just for the crusade just don't do as many costume changes what what, child what's next podcast to see more about that (laughs) there we go before we go into it we'll see you next time guys boy boy Thank you.